here. <laughs> I love this one. He sounds like me. Good morning. Good morning. On a fabulous Friday. Fabulous Friday, October the 9th of 2020. One week before our Dream Big Retreat. Mm. Just so excited about our retreat. Oh my goodness. It's, I did a little um, face, Facebook Live on our private Dream Big Retreat. Um, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I did a Facebook Live on our Dream Big Girls private page. And... Uh, um, I just was sharing with them. I I know God, so I know that he's been preparing me my whole life for this weekend, but for sure preparing us for this, this retreat in the 12 years since we've been doing them. And then for sure the last two years, I go clear back two years ago when he gave us the theme deeper still, you know, um, it's been a minimum of two years preparation for this weekend coming up. I, there are no words to describe what I know in my spirit man is getting ready to happen at this retreat. <clears throat> so if, if there's any of you that have had the slightest little unction inside of you to come and you've not acted on that, I'm telling you, you need to. You need to. We, we've said all along um, that Who's there is exactly who God wants to be there. You only come to those because God puts it in your spirit to come. It, that's, that's the way it works. And, you know, God canceled our spring retreat. The pandemic didn't cancel it. God did. We have every single time God intends for us to have one of these, we have one. And every single time God intends for you to come, you come. <clears throat> so if you've got an unction, if there's the slightest little inkling inside of you that you're supposed to be here uh, for this one, get a hold of me. Send me a private message. Call the office, 918-396-5171. Private message, Donna Long. And get yourself here. Get yourself here. Do not count the cost. It's not about the cost, I'm telling you. It's not about the money. Um, it is about what God has for you. For this particular weekend. So October the 9th, 2020, we're reading Jeremiah. We're in chapters 12 and 14 of the book of Jeremiah. I want to go to verse uh, chapter 13, verse 1, and just read just a little bit. This is what the Lord said to me. Go and buy a linen loincloth and put it on, but do not wash it. This is Jeremiah speaking. So I bought the loincloth as the Lord directed me and I put it on. Then the Lord gave me another message. Take the loin linen cloth you're wearing and go to the Euphrates River. Hide it there in a hole in the rock. So I went and hid it by the Euphrates as the Lord has instructed me. A long time afterward, the Lord said to me, go back to the Euphrates and get the loincloth I told you to hide there. So I went to the Euphrates and dug it out of the hole where I had hidden it. But now it was rotten and falling apart. The loincloth was good for nothing. Then I received this message from the Lord. This is what the Lord says. This shows how I will, not, uh, I will rot away the pride of Judah and Jerusalem. These wicked people refuse to listen to me. They stubbornly follow their own desires and worship other gods. Therefore, they will become like this loincloth, good for nothing. Now, <clears throat> I go through this and I'm reading day by day. And day by day, there are tidbits in this that helps me in my personal life with whatever it is in my life that I'm going through on that particular day. Now, I don't pick up this book and read that on October the 9th, 2020, God spoke to Elizabeth Inman and said, go put on a loincloth, go. You understand what I'm saying? I pick this up and I'm reading words about the evilness and the wickedness and the sins of the Israelites 
and I'm able to spiritually see, capital S, capital E, capital E. That's just the way that the good Lord has spoken to Elizabeth that when I am seeing, capital S, capital E, capital E, spiritually, when I'm seeing with spiritual eyes, it's, I signify that with an emphasis on the word see when I'm speaking and I emphasize it in my written word. If I write it in my Bible or I'm writing in my journal, it's a capital S, capital E, capital E. I see with spiritual eyes in the middle of all this chaos, in the middle of all the junk of how I've lived my life. There was a time in my life when I lived that way or historically how the Israelites were living. And I see But as for me, Lord, you know my heart. You see me and you test my thoughts. For the Lord, for the people have said, the Lord doesn't see what's ahead of us. The Lord doesn't see. See, this is the title for this particular reading in one of the translations that I use is Jeremiah's Complaint. He actually came before the Lord here in the first sentence. He says, Lord, you always give me justice when I bring a case before you. So let me bring you this complaint. Why are the wicked so prosperous? Why are evil people so, so happy? So in the context of that, when I read verse four, that says, for the people have said, the Lord doesn't see what's ahead for us. In his complaint, he's listening to the people and they're doubting God. And they're saying, the Lord doesn't even see what's ahead for us. Where is God? God is God. I mean, God is gone. God is, God's not here with us. He's not helping us. It's, it's the people complaining. And today, I, I was able to see the year 2020 in that statement. For the people have said the Lord doesn't see what's ahead for us. See, I, I, all you got to do is turn on the news. All you have to do is go out <laughs> to the place where you buy groceries. Go out into the marketplace and see the, the, the masks and see the fear on people's eyes and, and hear the tension in people's voices and the hatred on the news and the events of 2020 that seems to be the primary focus this year. And and it's the people saying that we don't we don't, that even God doesn't know what's ahead of us. Now okay, now back to my story about the loincloth. I wanted to show you how from the beginning God spoke in parables, how God uses the ordinary things that we can understand to speak to us supernaturally. See, he told Jeremiah, his prophet, to, to go put on a loincloth. That's something that they did on a regular basis back then. If you think about the, the date and the time that this all took place, they it is highly likely <clears throat> that this prophet named Jeremiah wore a, a, a robe. And the men of the time wore loincloths underneath those robes. It wasn't unusual for God to tell him to go put on a loincloth. It was unusual that God told him to go put on a loincloth. You understand what I'm saying? In other words, <laughs> once again, the relationship that Jeremiah had with God Almighty, that he would hear, okay, every morning I wake up and I put on a loincloth because I'm going to wear a robe and I'm a man. You see what I'm saying? But this morning I woke up and God said to go put on a loincloth. The level of intimacy it took for him to hear God say, go put on a loincloth and don't wash it. Do you hear God in those kind of details? And then another message came to take the loincloth to the Euphrates River you know, in my mind, I picture Jeremiah and the Euphrates River, and I picture wilderness because the world wasn't populated 
with 7 billion people. The world didn't have these massive cities and all the concrete and the highways. And I, I picture the Euphrates River and him going and finding a spot and finding a place where there was a hole because he said, hide it there in a hole in the rocks. I'm just saying I don't think that was necessarily an easy thing to do. So he went and he hid it. And then a long time afterwards, we don't know how long that was. Then God says to go back and get it out. How did he find that spot? How did he know where to go? How did he remember it was a long time ago? Well, he remembered because he got a word from God. And then I want to know how Jeremiah was in between that waiting period of time. I mean, I wake up one morning and God says, Elizabeth, put on a loincloth and don't wash it. So you do that. And then another message. We don't know the timing. Another message comes and says, you know, remember that loincloth? Take it and go hide it. You don't want to know what this girl would do? Okay, Lord, I did it. I put, okay, I got the loincloth on. Okay, I'm not, I haven't washed it. Okay, so I didn't wash it all day. I wore it today and I didn't wash it, Lord. So what's next? What's next? What? Tell me. I got, I got to know. Oh, and then time passes and I can just see myself up waking up every day. Why, why did he have me put on a loincloth? Why did he, what, what about a loincloth? It, and then he says, go hide it. Oh, okay, okay, Lord. So, I, I, boy, I, I go and I do it because I got a word. I heard. See, getting a word just means we we hear. Capital H, capital E, capital A, capital R. With our spiritual ears. So I go hide the loincloth. And then I'm waiting. God, why did you have me do that? What sense does that make? What What is there about a loincloth? What? I can just see me imploring God and being impatient and wanting to know and wanting to know and wanting to know. And then it was a long time after. Go back and get it. Before God finally says that this loincloth represents the pride of the people. <laughs> but now it was rotting and falling apart. The loincloth was good for nothing. And then I received this message from the Lord. Did he receive it right then? The moment he picked it up, did God speak? Or was there another waiting period? See, we don't know. The text doesn't tell us. This is what the Lord says about the loincloth. This shows how I will rot away the pride of Judah and Jerusalem. These wicked people refuse to listen to me. They stubbornly follow their own desires and worship other gods. Therefore, they will become like this loincloth, good for nothing. I wanted to use this to encourage you that it is indeed God Almighty speaking to me when I can take scriptures about the sin and the horrible life that the Israelites was leading and I can look and I can read, but but as for me, verse 3, you know my heart, Lord. You see me in my thoughts. And, and all of a sudden, today's reading is personal for me. In that moment, it's, he knows my thoughts. You want to know what happened to me this morning? I had some training with my business coach this week that was intense. Intense. Nothing bad. The, the direction we're going is nothing short of glorious. It's, I know that I know with everything in me, it's God's good and perfect will to go the direction we're being led. My business coach is one of the most godly men I've ever met in my life. And what has happened the last two days is I got back into a works mentality. It's a, oh, I got my checklist. I got to do this, and 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 I got, and Tanya's waiting on me for this, and this, and this, and I didn't get done what Tanya needed for me to get done yesterday. That was my whole goal yesterday. My whole goal yesterday was to do that. Now, I got a lot done. I checked off a lot of things on my list. Yes, I, you know what? I worked hard yesterday. I worked hard yesterday. 
I sent everybody home 30 minutes early. My tooth was hurting. I've had some dental work done. I, infection was trying to set in. I rebuked that in the name of Jesus. I could feel it spreading in my mouth. By the end of the day, I'm spent. I laid down and took a nap yesterday. And I woke up this morning and I've got plans today. I mean, I've got people coming in. We've got a lady coming in. We've got, uh, I mean, the plan that the business coach has in place for us that we've agreed is God guiding us is in place and it's moving and it's flowing and it's, and what I had done though, is I had picked it up and I took it on as mine and I was into that works mentality that I'm going to make this happen. 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 And then I read the word this morning that said, but as for me, Lord, you know, my heart, you see me and test my thoughts. And I just, I just symbolically dropped to my knees. I was sitting on my chair in my prayer closet and I had a teacher that I don't normally listen to on and his voice was playing. And in fact, at that moment, he was reading scriptures. And I just, I closed my eyes and I just said, I release it. I release it. No, that's not mine to take on. No, 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 no. I release it. I release it. And then I leaned back and I took deep breaths. And I breathed him in. And I breathed out all the junk. And I took a moment and I recentered back on the living God that lives on the inside of me because he knows my thoughts. <laughs> oh. And then I continued to read and I got to the loincloth because there's some times that even the people around me will say, how did you get that out of today's reading? And, and that meant nothing to me. And, and, and yet for me, it was like, and you know, I just wanted to take this opportunity to use that to reinforce to you guys not so much that this is how I get this out of this. More importantly, because this whole Bible study is for two purposes and two purposes alone. Here in this house, in this business, right here in Sky Took, Oklahoma, the purpose of this Bible study is to start our day in God's Word focused on Him. And Facebook Live, YouTube, Instagram, all of that, the purpose is to encourage you to pray and to listen and to read and to hear his voice speak to you in all of the different ways in which he speaks to us. Sometimes it's just in the stillness. It's the reason we listen is because he speaks and then our brain is doing its thing and in comes that thought and his word speaks to us and he inserts his thoughts right into the middle of our thoughts. And we know, we know that was God. How did Jeremiah know that he woke up that morning and God said, go put on this loincloth? See, I want that intimacy. I want to know when God tells me to put my bra on. I want to be that intimate with him. And if he tells me to go bury it, I want to hear his voice. And I want to know that it's him. And I want you to see that symbolically he speaks to us. Marriage was never intended to be between a man and a woman. Marriage is the joining together of our spirits and his spirits. It is through faith that we accept that he is who he is and we are who he says we are. It is the act and the only act of belief by faith that's required of us for the union of holy matrimony to take place between his spirit and our spirit. But that's deep. That's third dimensional. That is not of this earth type truth. And he knew that in this carnal body that he created, by the way, he created this, this, this body, your body he created, he knew we would struggle understanding this and getting the depths of it 
So he created us male and female. And he said, it is not good for man not to have his help meet. And he created woman so the two could become one and they would complete one another. One another. They would complete. They together joined in holy matrimony with his spirit right smack dab in the middle of both of them. Becomes a triune being representing the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, just as the loincloth represented the people and what they would become. No good for anything. That's the way that works. That's how I read. This word written down and his word right inside of our hearts tell us my word never returns void. I don't care at what level you are in saying, I could read a thousand pages in this book and I get nothing out of it. That is a lie from the pits of hell. Because when you read, just because your physical mind is not comprehended what you're getting, there is a transformation taking place on the inside of you. Every single time you sacrifice your time, the sacrifice of your time takes place. There is an exchange that happens and you're being renewed and transformed from the inside out and we start living our life from the inside out. That's the way it works. Never a time when you read that there isn't a change taking place on the inside of you. Just because you see it doesn't make it true. Just because you're not getting it doesn't mean it's not that you're not getting it. We live by faith, not by sight. So I encourage you to read. I encourage you to listen. I encourage you to pray. I encourage you to give. I encourage you to serve. And I encourage you to fellowship with fellow believers. Our iron sharpens iron. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Those who gather in my courts will be blessed. I love you guys. Have a fabulous Friday and a wonderful weekend. And we'll be back on Magnificent Monday.